pricing structure for Ubisoft's upcoming AAA open world RPG, Star Wars Outlaws, has finally been released. But the price, along with the horrible faces featured in the game, will shock you. Let's talk about that on That Park Place Podcast Online, or as we like to call it, T3 PM. Let's take a little journey, and we're going to take a journey over to the land of Ubisoft. And here's what we have, folks. This is by Ryan Pearson. It says, Ubisoft Star Wars Outlaws faces massive backlash over absurd release pricing. Protagonist's in-game model looks worse than the real-world actress. Now, folks, we've been covering this, but we've been covering it from the angle of this idea that game companies want to uh, uglify their characters. So if you've seen the original model who plays this uh, character, you know that she is a beautiful young woman and that this character looks nothing like her. This character looks more like Mick Jagger. But K. Vess, played by um uh, Umberly Gonzalez, is uh, not the key focus of today's topic. Because today, we're finding out that uh, this video game is costing a ton of money for people who might still want to enjoy it. Though few. It says, though reasons for this backlash are numerous, per comments regarding the game made both on social media and on its respective trailer uploads, the main points of contention players are having with Star Wars Outlaws artistic direction and its absurd monetization schemes. So what are we talking about here? Well, and that's the perfect picture. Just take a look at that. that that's, what they, that's what they were working with, and that's what they arrived with. Meth mouth uh, is where we have uh, achieved but here's, here's the monetary side of it, okay? Because this is really, this is something. Because I think what this speaks to is that Star Wars and those who hold Star Wars properties, they still seem to think that this has some sort of uh, cachet, some kind of gravitas that means that people will gravitate to paying tons of money. And I think that's gone. I think the Star Wars Hotel showed us that. But it says, unfortunately for Ubisoft, the backlash was only amplified following the reveal of the price tax for each of the game's three retail editions. Get ready for this, folks. You can, you can have meth mouth for these three amounts. For the standard edition, players will need to fork over a worryingly growing industry standard price of $70 USD. That means it's American dollars. Then there's the gold edition. No, that does not put gold in her teeth, which for the price of $110 gets players not just the game, but also three days early access. Oh boy. The Kessel Runner cosmetic pack, which includes one skin apiece for Kay's speeder and her starship, the Trailblazer, and the game's season pass. Now, get ready for this, folks. Unless you are subscribed to the Season Pass, so that's beyond the $70. Unless you're subscribed to the Season Pass, you can't even play the little missions that take you up against Job of the Hut, which have been the key part of the marketing so far. Whoa. Finally, for a whopping $130, players can take home the Ultimate Edition, its offerings including not only all of the above items, but also to an extra Kessel Run skin for Kay and her alien companion Nyx, the Rogue Infiltrator and Sabak Shark vehicle skin bundles, a digital art book, and the ability to play an exclusive mission, Jabba's Gambit, at launch. So this goes back to that thing that we've been paying attention to, which is Disney and Disney partners nickel and diming consumers to death. We go to Kara first. Kara, have you been following this controversy? And what do you think of this idea that uh, Star Wars and Ubisoft, they still believe that they can charge huge amounts of money, car payment amounts of money, and folks will fork it over because Star Wars, Star Wars. It does not surprise me that Ubisoft is doing this with the different um, levels or the different tiers for the game. I will say that as much as I hate that $70 price tag in that it is starting to become more... Uh, prominent. I know that's how much we paid for Dragon's Dogma just last month. And uh, I do know the, how much it costs to make games and how much it does actually like I, I'm not opposed. Like, obviously, I don't like paying it. But like, if it's a good game, I can justify the 70 the $70 price tag. But I do not like the $180. Is that what that was for that ultimate edition? Don't forget, though, Kara, you also need to subscribe to the season passes. Yeah, that's not OK. I don't agree with that. I think if you were paying like if you buy the ultimate edition, it better come with every bit of content that that game has come out with. Like, I don't even like paying that for like a collector's edition of a game that like came with a statue. 
Like that, like if I'm going to be paying that much, it better come with like, like, like what I spent for God of War Ragnarok or. I think it I should sp- make her attractive if you spend that much. That should be the big, <laughs> the big reward. In all fairness, I mean, I, I went to the grocery store yesterday and I did not attempt to purchase anything that was, you know, absolutely extravagant. Uh, it was just a, a normal dinner and uh, cooking for four to five people. And I spent somewhere around $170. Now, I'm telling you, I wasn't buying steaks or anything. And there were leftovers that people, you know, could take home. But all of that said, $170 for about six bags of groceries. I get that inflation is a huge problem and that it that it's still here, right? And, and, and prices have not gone down. And I get that that translates into the making of video games. And making games is now more expensive than ever before. So I understand, listen. I've bought games for $39.99 as the standard. I've bought games for $49.99 as the standard. And now we are at $69.99 for the standard. I get it. I don't like it because I don't like inflation. That said, where I draw the line with Star Wars and Ubisoft is when you have this multi-layered system now mm-hmm. and when the the payback for that, right? So the value added seems to me to be it's aimed at people with kind of addictive personalities where, well, I got to have the skin. Oh, I got to have the, you know, but there's, there's really not much here. And when you market it, when you market this game with the job of the hut stuff, and that's going to cost you, like you said, in the upper $100 to $200 range, wow. that's, you know, come on. Because the kids, if there are kids who care about Star Wars at all remaining, then this is, you know, this, that's also, what they want. They what want does it say that all of the original trilogy attached stuff that they know that people will pay for is is behind a paywall? Because the the chance to go on a mission that that involves Jabba the Hutt and the uh, the entire bounty hunter uh, collection there, I think they know what's actually marketable here when they do that, as opposed to this battle droid and, uh, and some lady. Uh, I don't know. There's just not a lot of strong characterization. There's not a lot of charisma to this. The villain... Uh, I think his name is like Slimo or something like that. But if it's not Slimo, it's something that is generically sounding almost the same as that. There's just so much about that that it is very bland. They've sanded off all the edges and they're charging for the things that you would actually want out of the game. It's gross. And Bob Iger, uh, when w- I forget which Battlefront game back in the day that he said, oh, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to stop this microtransaction loot box nonsense. He can't, got to come in and say he was going to be the hero to stop this mess. But but here we are again, instead of saying it's a loot box, now they're saying we're going to charge you almost twice as much in order to get you a little bit closer to the game you actually wanted. I just thought the whole thing is disgusting to me. I would rather go back and play Pikmin 4 again, where I know I'm going to have a good time. I Okay, so when it comes to games, I, I like aesthetics of various games. Each game should have its own set of aesthetics and, and, and you know, represent the characters they're presenting well. So you don't necessarily have to have the most human-like features or anything like that if you're trying to portray humanoids. But it, it this this definitely has some problems. And I'm, I'm not going to comment directly on the character model, which is poor, but I'll say that the the fact that none of this game looked very good to me uh visually for that kind of price i mean i want very refined graphics we have you know modern video cards and consoles that can carve up you know just about any level of detail that you can put into a game and so i'm i'm to say that you know we can definitely pick out the this character model but we can also look around and say okay you know the gun that she's holding in that image is in, in looks like an unnatural position there's a lot of problems with visually with the game from what i've seen i'm i'm just worried that you're you're going to get something that's undercooked that's incredibly expensive and that really is uh, kind of making our argument as you pointed out pro that star wars has no value other than the original trilogy um, that people want to revisit. And so the only way they can garner any form of interest is to just is to put, you know, that bait in the water that you get that chance, whether it be, uh, you know, um, Boba Fett, Job of the Hutt, whatever you throw out there. If the only way you get access to that is by spending extra money or, you know, you're going to have people spending extra money. But I think we're about to find out the question that you asked, bro, is this a popular thing? Will this sell games? Is is Star Wars capable of selling games still? 
I remember I want to see how it compares to what Hogwarts Legacy did. <laughs> oh, that's oh what come I on, Kara. Thinking. Kara, that's, that's unfair. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's cool. It's cool. It is. It is. But I think she's right. I mean, it's going to be... We're going to be looking at these sales numbers and, it, it, you know, it's going to be the, the conversation we've been having for five years that the Internet just decided to join, that Disney has destroyed all their IPs, starting with Star Wars specifically. It, it, welcome to the party, kids. We've been here a while. You know, you know. You know what must drive them nuts? Kara just nailed it because, uh, folks, if you want to drive the, uh, the uh, extremists on Twitter slash X and TikTok crazy, Remind yeah. them that in 2024, J.K. Rowling is the queen of games and uh, Kathleen Kennedy is not. And that will drive and them. can I, may I please make a comparison? Please. Um, so Hogwarts Legacy is do, did a, a similar aspect to where there was an exclusive mission that was only on PS5. I think it was like the haunted shop or whatever it was called. It was one of the most like interesting quests, honestly that I did not expect in the game. And it was only with, I believe, like the deluxe edition uh, if you bought Hogwarts Legacy. What level did you have to purchase if to get the Job of the Hut game? And the one thing that I did like about Hogwarts Legacy is they did not promote that, that haunted uh, shop as one of the main aspects of the marketing. And it seems like Star Wars Outlaws is trying to do that with the Job of the Hut mission line so they are trying to be a bit deceptive whenever it comes to the content that you're going to be receiving in the base game compared to what hogwarts legacy did with that particular shop so there is some deception in it which i think is not okay especially for the price tag so if they want to learn if they want to see a outline of how to release a game that worked i mean people didn't start talking about that exclusive mission in in Hogwarts Legacy until after it came out. But it was one of those that really garnered that excitement because nobody expected it to be what it was. They, they have a lot that they could learn on how to provide an exclusive mission that they're wanting to like nickel and dime for without being kind of deceptive about it. And no moral judgments here. We're not incensed. We're not emotional about this. We just, we're going to be watching the market. And folks, we'll get an answer because the market will do the math for us. And we'll find out if these kinds of uh, strategies are successful. Let me ask Another one question. Uh, Go ahead, Alan. So for the 70 bucks, you can't play the full game. Correct. It gets you through the turnstile. Yeah, that, that's a non-starter for me. I, I can't, I mean, 70 bucks is too expensive. And yeah, so... I, I won't be playing this game, period. That was a highlight from the Pro Show, where the full recording can be found on the WW Pro YouTube channel, exclusive to members. What about you? Will you be pre-ordering a copy of Star Wars Outlaws before release? Or will you be foregoing this release until at least reviews, or maybe even entirely? And if you do, why? Was it because of the content featured in the game, or the price? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3 PO. Please comment, like, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.